Hello and welcome to another episode of my Working With Todoist series. My name is Carl Pauline and this week I'm going to show you something I learned from Tony Robbins' RPM method that I occasionally use in Todoist when I have a long list of tasks. Now I hear you asking, maybe, what is Tony Robbins' RPM method? Well RPM stands for Rapid Planning Method or something like that. It keeps changing. If you go Google it, you'll have different uh, meanings for this word. But essentially, all you need to know is it's Tony Robbins's project or life management system. It's his time management system. Now, in that system, you have a method called chunking. Now, what chunking means is you are grouping together similar tasks so that you can do them all at the same time. Now this is great when you understand a little bit of how the way our brain works, which is if we're task switching, like going from one type of task to another type of task, that is a real inefficient way of using your brain. But if you actually do email in one big chunk, all the emails that you have to do in one big chunk, or you do all your design work all in one big chunk, or your writing work all in one big chunk, that way you will get your, the most effective efficiency from your brain. That's the theory behind it. I've tested this, it does work. And I do always set aside time in my calendar as part of my time blocking system. Okay, so without further ado, it's gonna be much easier to explain this in Todoist. So let me take you into Todoist now. But before I do that, what I'd just like to say is if you do get any value from this video, please help me by clicking on that like button below. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and you want to get all the latest tips, tricks and news on using Todoist, then please subscribe to my channel. Okay, let me take you into my Todoist demo account now and I'll show you how to do chunking. Okay, so let's have a look at my This Week folder. So this is what it's going to look like immediately after I have moved anything that's in next week into this week. So as you'll notice, there's a couple of items still left in my next week. But that's essentially because I decided while I was doing my weekly planning session that those two items are not needed not need to be done next week and what I've got in here is enough to get on with. Now as I go through this list I notice that there's a lot of tasks in here that are related to what I would describe as communication. So check in with Sunny, follow up with John Smith, Chase SC, follow up with Jeff, call Claire. All these are what I describe as communications. So what you can do is you can group these together. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shift sorry command click on the first one here check Claire. Follow up Jeff I'm going to command click on that. Chase SC, command click on that, command click on that one, call Claire, uh, follow up with Fred, call Pete, and I'm just command clicking on these. All of these are related to communications. I'm now going to go to label and I'm going to type in communications, which I don't have, as you can see, I only actually have one. So I'm going to create uh, the communications label. So create communications and check the box and check the box. <laughs> And as you'll notice, nothing actually happens. Even if I press return and go back in there, uh, in the press return. So I'm just going to come out of that. And you'll notice, though, that all of these now that I actually set up have communication. They've just come in. So don't be fooled when it says nothing comes up because you'll, once you've hit return and clicked out, it does show up. Now, the thing is, what I want to be able to do is I'm just going to go into my communications label now. I'm going to edit the label. And I'm just going to make that red because I want to be able to see that very easily. And the current color gray doesn't show up very well. So I'm going to give that a color of red. So you can see that now. So now I've done that, what I'm going to be thinking is, can I do this in one big lump sum? When I see that I have that many tasks related to communications, that tells me I need to block at least an hour off in my calendar purely for communications. It's like the indication this week is mainly going to be a go out communications. Now, this might not happen with your this week folder. This is just my demo account. This could be when you're doing your daily planning and you look through your list and you go, whoa, I've got a lot of communications tomorrow. And quite often you'll find that this will be on a Friday afternoon or Friday when it comes up. 
So all you need to do once you've done that is when you've actually get ready, you're gonna say, right, it's now time for my communications hour. That's what your calendar is telling you. So you just click on communications and you start at the top and you go work your way down. So you don't even actually have to add a date to this if you're not sure when you're going to do it. But normally when I'm working through my this week folder, that's when I'm actually dating things. So now that I know that these are all going to be related to my communications, what I can do is if I go back to my this week project, because if you look, notice something in the filter, uh, in, a, in a label, you don't get the three dots. So if I command click on this, and go down to the bottom, which I actually I can do now. I can now say, right, I'm grouping these together and I'm going to do these on Friday. So that'd be the 26th now. Now, let me say I'm gonna do these on Monday the 22nd. So I'm gonna add the date for Monday the 22nd. So the beauty of it is now is I've got a set of tasks that are going to come up on Monday that I'm going to deal with this. And my calendar is going to tell me I've got 90 minutes or an hour to deal with that whole session of communications. Get them all together, as in Tony Robbins would call it, chunk them together and deal with them in one go. You're focused on communications. You can even go further. If you want to break this down further, you can actually go in and sep separate this out with by the calls as well. So I've got uh, Professor Dent, maybe it's going to be an email. Call Pete is obviously going to be a phone call. Claire could be a phone call. Uh, check in with Sunny could be a phone call you decide how you're going to do this. For me personally, I just have one group chunk called communications and I usually have an hour or 90 minutes set aside in my day to deal with that. And that is basically what you do with chunking. Now, the other thing I can do now is I can go into here and I can go to, I can go to here and just sort of go, uh, I can go like, for example, uh, do the, um, <clears throat> the hashtag which means project so I can type in next week and put that there oops I shouldn't have done that so I'll do that next week um, and then and not which is exclamation mark at communications and that if I hit return it will just give me the two items as in this example that is not related to communication so I can actually filter out the communications because I know I've taken care of those I've got that blocked off in my calendar I've got 90 minutes whatever set aside for dealing with my communications on Monday afternoon so all I now need to figure worry about is these two things that I need to work on next week and that's it. That's all you need to worry about. There's nothing else that you have to worry about in your actual list. So there you go. That's what I just wanted to show you about chunking and how using labels in Todoist can really make that process so much easier. And again, it's just another example of how your calendar and Todoist can work together that is, the calendar is saying, I've now got 90 minutes to deal with my communications. Todoist will tell you what your communications are going to be, which you've got down there. And I say, you don't actually have to date it if you don't want. You can just go into the label. But the problem I see with most people's Todoist is it isn't that they've just, they've got several communications. They have hundreds of them. Well, you're not going to be able to do a hundred telephone calls or 100 emails in an hour or 90 minutes you may need to break it down so that's why you might use dates so hopefully that's given you a few ideas about how you can manipulate to do his tools to get the most out of this amazing app thank you very much for watching this episode and it just remains for me now to wish you all a very very productive week Hello, thank you very much for watching my videos. Now I have something exciting to tell you about. Recently I have developed a brand new time management system. It's a system designed to manage your time in the 21st century. The world has changed a lot over the last 20 years. In fact, it's actually changed a lot this year. And what we need now is a system, a time management system that is very easy to use easy to maintain so that you can spend more of your time doing the work. And that's what the time sector system is all about. It's going to change your whole belief system about way, the way a time management system should work 
because this focuses on when, when you are going to do the task. And let's be honest, it doesn't matter how motivated, inspired or how urgent something is. If you don't have time to do it, it is never going to get done. And that's what this system is built around, getting your work done. So you can spend more of your time doing the things that you want to do. I hope you join me in this course. The full details of the course are in the show notes below. So please join me and thank you very much for watching this brief video.